this part of the system is a pressure force main. So these are just junctions where it turns. Um, these could be air release valves, and maybe that makes an easier way to grasp it. So in an air release valve situation, you would have a manhole with a rim and an invert. Okay. You need to have junctions if you're tying other flows together, so on and so forth. So let me uh, take these up. One five. No, let's just go really far. One fifty, and then uh, one fifty-five. I'm going to connect those junctions now with the pipe. So note here, you can do a pipe with different uh, bends at it. But you'd say, well, why would I need this junction then? Well, if you're going to bring another piece of the system into here into this force main to connect up, you're going to need, you can't connect pipe to pipe directly. So even if there's an air release valve there or not, you need to have a, a node. But if you do need to edit the bends, these selectors over here, there's an edit vertices, so you can select the pipe and then you can drag those to move them around. You can even add vertices, delete vertices, things like that. Uh, final piece here is we do need an exit. So this would be sort of your treatment plant or whatnot. We're going to make a connection there. Um, do need to go into these pipes, change them from circular 18 inches. We're going to do a 2-inch force main. Okay, do the next. And we're at 150 here. So then let's drop down. Let's say this is a, just an outfall. You know, it goes into a, a manhole there, and then from that manhole directly gravity flows into the pump station. So let's say it's a 12-inch pipe. Culvert, um, it's 150, and then let's say it's 149. Got the outlet, and then this final free fall, 145, and then your type of uh, outfall. Is it free? Is it normal? So on and so forth. We've had that a part of uh, Hydroflow for a while. One thing we do need to uh, <laughs> do on this pipe is how do we represent that there's a check valve in the system so this flow when it's pumping up it can't just flow back down into the wet well if you right click or if you double click on one of the, the pressure lines so this would be the first line coming up and you want to simulate a check valve in the system use this flat gate you check that on and that forces flow to go in one direction otherwise it can go bi bi bi-directional at this point, I think everything's set up. Let's take a look at uh, what we've created here. And uh, let me save this. Save it to class. And you can, uh, there's some other options over here. You can do a profile plot. So I'm click that profile plot. I can pick my upstream node and then my downstream. It's going to generate a profile for me. I can profile to take a look at this. So you can see that's our system. Uh, we're coming down here from the home. We're coming down into the lift station. After the lift station, we pump up, and we have pressure lines coming up here uh, to the top, and then it just gravities down into the into the treatment plant. So everything looks good geometry-wise. Some options you need to set in your system um, for analysis of this. Give me a second here. Project options. Uh, you go into um, sorry about that. Go in design, then project options. You know gallons per minute. Uh, hydrology method. There's that SWMM. Important piece down here is that when you are doing um, low pressure system design, you have to set this to hydrodynamic. If you have it set to kinetic wave or steady state. That's going to just step, it's, it's not going to let flow go both ways, and it just won't run the model. Here we talked about the Hayes and Williams 
and that's what we used. There's also the Darcy Weisbach for force main equation for when it gets pressurized. Um, so that sets that up. The next piece is going to our uh, analysis options. The routing um, is important. The routing is essentially how it's going to calculate time step. So it's going to, every second it's going to calculate a time step point. You want, if you're using hydrodynamic, you have to have this value less than 10 seconds. They recommend even less than five. Um, I just set it to a second. It doesn't take that long for the computer to, you know, go through the analysis. And then the report, five minutes, I had it down to a minute or five minutes. So it's calculating based on every second. <laughs> but your report units will only be down every five minutes. And, of course, if you've had a combined system, this would be the hydrology part. This would be the sanitary part. It asks you for actually calendar days when you're going to run this. So if you want to do a 24-hour period, you would just pick a next day. I just make January 1st to January 2nd typically. But essentially, this is your analysis duration. You can have your report dates actually start and end different from your now hydraulic flow routing. Have that checked on, of course. If you don't, it's not going to do anything. I'm not going to go into these variables. I don't look at, I would suggest everybody looks in the help for these and the length, time step. Uh, I would leave these at zero unless you have some other good reason. I'm going to click OK. Our analysis should be good at this point, and uh, we're just going to run it. Uh, you can go back up to anal uh, analysis and perform analysis, and it goes through and uh, does a simulation on it. It will save a little report. I usually just uncheck that. This is an important, uh, this is, talks about some of the error. From what I've read, if that gets above 10%, you need to worry. You just, your model's not right. Hit OK, and uh, now we can look at the system. And uh, I'm going to look at the profile again. And turn off some of this stuff. In here, oh, I don't need all this text. All right, so essentially what you see on the screen here is your hydraulic grade line. If you go up to the output, you have, you can run a custom report. You can look at the uh, ASCII output report, essentially is its raw report. You know, important thing to look down there is the water surf, the warnings and error messages. There's in the help, it talks about each one of these and what you might need to do. So you can see we have a number of problems we need to look at. And we'll get to those here in just a second. Go back to my profile tab here, what has the profile made. You can also go up to uh, output and hit the output animation. And essentially you can watch it, the system, work. So in this scenario, we got water flowing into the Pump station, water surface elevation starts to rise, pumps kick on, it drops back down again. And that's just, that's essentially your system. I mean, low pressure system, that's what you're modeling. Imagine that with a bunch of pumps, not just one. Um, you can see some things are a little goofy here. Um, you know, why don't we have data? over here for uh, max velocities and so on and so forth. Well, looks like everything's working right, doesn't it? But it's not. You can't ignore those error messages. Those meant something. <coughs> what uh, is going on there is that we're restricting the model. This took me a while to figure this out. <laughs> when you're doing a pressure system model, you have to not restrict that um, hydraulic grade line. So by restricting that hydro, leaving that at zero, it means essentially the hydraulic grade line is uh, set at the invert of the pipe. So when the pumps turn on, there's an immediate loss of water. So the rest of the system never sees any water. So the pumps turn on, it goes into that first pipe and it disappears because my uh, surcharge elevation was zero which by default it will bring it up to 100. So I need to make that some ridiculously high number. 
10,000 seems pretty high and ridiculous to me. We'll go with that. And I need to set that at every node. Now, if you were doing a, a conveyance design, yeah, you wouldn't set that at some ridiculously high number. You would set that at the top of your panel. And then if your hydraulic grade line gets up to that, it's going to say submergence, get and give you error warnings. You know you need to fix something because you can't submerge your inlets. Close again. And we should be good. And go ahead and run this one more time. Hit OK. Come back here. And then you can uh, run your system again. You can see now we're getting velocities. Getting velocities down here from max velocity in our force main, so 4 inch or 4 feet per second, not too bad. Um, and uh, go from there. Uh, some of the things you can do for just this display, this means there's uh, some things we need to look at with these pipes. Display options, you can go into options here. You can actually, uh, you know, I just did a right click on the desk, on the, the, uh, screen here. This is where you turn on, you know, what text it shows on the screen, so on and so forth. You can set these to, uh, and, uh, flow velocity, turn on my legend, turn on my two nodes, and then you can actually see it will color code the system. Um, notice you can keep that time thing running and toggle in between your profile and your uh, plan view. And then down here, you can actually look at your time series plots. All these reports and graphs, this is where this, you know, customized report is. You can do some output. You can output to Excel file, um, so on and so forth. You can, all these things you can look at, exfiltration, volume, flooding, so on and so forth. There's a whole thing in reports. That's essentially it. That's the, the crash course on uh, pressure, low pressure system. If you think about it, there's really not too much you can't model with this. I'm, I'm drawing a blank on what we do that you can't model with this. It does all the nutrient stuff. It does all the sanitary stuff. If you have combined systems or you're just doing gravity and pump stations for the sanitary side, if you're doing storm and have ponds and rears and culverts and it goes out of your system into a channel and then under a road culvert and back into an inlet and then goes off to your bit. You can put that all right in here and just run it all at once. So it's an option. So that's it. I'm just going to, you know, leave here. I'm going to show you the little light show that this thing does when it, when you have a lot of little things coming together on it. So as you can see now I have time lapse. So these, you know, this is count through minutes like seconds, even milliseconds. As you can see when the system's actuating and and uh pump different all these different things are pumps turning on and so on and so forth. And then you can uh go in your time series plot and you can see uh if I look at come down to links and I come down to um what do I want to look at? Head point, so this is the, the head on the pipe, so that's the deal, that's total dynamic head, so that has to deal with elevation and all the pressure in the system, and that's right at this point, right here, where this shopping center pumps in. You can see how that head value, as you go into your 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock hour, because there's so many pumps turning on, at the same time, that head starts to increase. And some of the things we're trying to pull away from here is that the shutoff head for that pump, for this station right here, so that the head elevation where it can't pump past it, it basically will turn on but no flow goes out because um, it's too much pressure to push against, is uh, 146. So we are right at it for that, and it's a private pump station, and here we're above it. So at this part, it's this time in the system when that development's pump station turns on, no water comes out, and that wears on the um, on the impellers on the pump and the pumps will start to wear out.